The Houston Cougars withstood a huge fight in Austin on Big Monday, and there is no doubt they are the team to beat in their first year in the Big 12. You are Locked On College Basketball, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up, folks? Happy Tuesday. Welcome into the Locked On College Basketball Podcast, a daily national college hoop show, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. We are your co-hosts. I'm Andy Patton. He is Isaac Shade. What's up? Today's episode of Locked On College Basketball is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more, folks. Right now, new customers who join today, you'll get $200 in bonus bets if your first bet of $5 or more wins. Visit FanDuel.com slash Locked On today to get started. Well, Isaac, we got a bunch of great games to preview on Tuesday. We're going to get to that at the end of the show. We're also going to talk about Big Monday's action in Austin, Texas and Duke versus Virginia Tech. Before we get into that, though, it's Trivia Tuesday and I got a trivia question for you. We're going to answer okay. it at the end of the show for those, those of you listening. Think about what you what you might think the answer is to this one. We'll get to it at the end. Isaac, here we go. Okay, I'm ready. Give Houston. it to me. This is kind of teasing what we're about to talk about, but Houston became the fourth member of this season's 19-win club. Ooh. Can you name the other three teams who currently, as we're recording this, have 19 wins? Think about that, and we will talk about it at the end of the show. No 20-game winners yet? We're not there? No, we're no 20-game winners. I was thinking about, like, oh, which team's going to be the first to 20? I looked up their schedules. We can talk about that at the end oh. of the show. Uh, interestingly, two of these teams, here's a tip for you. They are playing a team that they already lost to. I have their very few losses, two of these four teams. Their next game is against mm. somebody they already lost to. I thought that was an interesting tidbit as well. Isaac, let's talk about this Houston-Texas game because this thing was absolutely fantastic. It was. In a game with so much defense, with a, a really kind of not a lot of scoring in the first half, still a lot of excitement, but it just wasn't the high scoring, which is what we've come to expect from Kelvin Sampson and the Cougars. There was just big shot after big shot after big shot in the last eight to ten minutes of the second half, slow start to overtime, and then a bunch of big shots after that. It was a really really good, fun basketball performance from two teams that looked really good. And I think that was, you know, for us trying to find like, what was the big storyline here? Because we expected Houston to win, even going on the road and in a tough environment. And I think that the, the main thing is you got to give a hats off to them for managing to pull it off because this Texas team looked really good. This is about as good as they've looked in a long time. And, and they got some really fantastic performances uh, from key players coming off the bench and, and they were so, so close to being able to pull off what would have been their biggest win of the season. But Houston, they find ways, they find ways to, to eventually secure a victory. And that's why they're sitting here. Like we said, one of the top four teams in terms of total wins this season. Yeah, man, it's it, Andy. It's so tough for Texas because obviously both teams need every Big Twelve win they can get. I mean, they're just so hard to come by. Um, but for Texas, who I know we're going to start getting into real bubble conversation later this week for the first time as the calendar flips to February. But um, Texas's resume just doesn't have really much or enough on it mm-hmm. yet, and this would have been by easy margin their best win of the season uh would have been a big resume boost probably put them a little more comfortably into the field so i'm a, I'm a little worried about uh rodney terry's team there andy but as you said for houston man i mean i i after terrence arsenal went down with that achilles for the season i was legitimately a little bit concerned like mm-hmm. you lose a guy that uh, from a from a backcourt standpoint, you're like, man, the, this backcourt between Jamal Shedd and LJ Cryer and Arsenal and, and on and on, it's like you're feeling really good, but you'll lose part of that. It's like, I don't know. But if there's anything we've learned about Kelvin Sampson and his teams, man, they just I, – I don't want to say it's plug and play because you don't have 87 dudes like you do on a football roster, mm-hmm. but there's enough – they just it's like they just trust everyone they have and everyone's bought in and everyone understands what they're trying to do as a team and so even as they've made this leap to the big 12 it's still rolling yeah the system seems to be really just firing on all cylinders you know and and we've talked a handful of times on the show about how they need consistency from their backcourt offensively in order to win games and i still that's still true and LJ Cryer, you know, he didn't have a particularly great game against the Longhorns. He finished with 14 points, two of nine from three, five of 17 from the field. Just not a great game from him. But Jamal Shedd, Jamal Shedd brought 
25 points for him. He had eight rebounds. He had four assists. He was three of nine from three. He was 11 of 24 from the field. Hit big shot after big shot. He made a mistake in overtime that it felt like was going to cost them the game or in regulation. He took a deep three when he probably should have tried to drive to the basket. That was a, a somewhat baffling. He had Max Aismas on him, Andy. Yeah, he had Aismas. Yeah, he should. They got the switch they wanted. It was clear Samson wanted him to drive to the hoop. He didn't. <laughs> yeah. Whatever. It worked out for them in the end. But I, I think that this, you know, we've been worried of like, hey, does this team have a Marcus Sass or like, do they have just like a go-to guy that they can rely on? And, and Cryer was kind of expected to be that guy and, and his performance in conference play has been inconsistent. Uh, whereas Shed, he's been great. And I think that's the huge storyline for them. Emmanuel Sharp had a great game here as well. Uh, 13 points, three of eight shooting for him. He, he was nice in this one. And I think for them, it is a matter of, of finding those guys to step up. And, and one guy we wanted to mention in particular was Joseph Tugler incredible performance off the bench freshman big man doesn't play a ton for this team wasn't really even on our radar he finishes this game with four points five rebounds and two blocks all of his points come in overtime he gets a pair of really clutch offensive rebounds uh, just a really really nice performance and that's the kind of thing that we've kind of come to accept uh, expect from samson's teams of like the, like you said next man up they bring the guy in he's ready to go he understands the system he understands his role and they can contribute right away in a high pressure environment in overtime in austin and come in and deliver like that not a lot of teams have and it's not just the talent obviously these are talented players but it's the these guys understand their role and don't get rattled by that kind of experience. And to me, that is why Houston, because what you need to do to win the Big 12, what you need to do to win this conference, to be a number one seed, to make a deep run, is you need to be able to withstand these kind of games. You need to be able to withstand an, a team coming back from eight down at halftime, to taking a lead on you, to having a big run, to the crowd going crazy, and you still find a way to get a W. A lot of teams, and some of them- John, in- they, they lose that game easy lose that game they lose that game a lot of most teams most teams lose that game and houston didn't and and that to me i think is is a huge selling point on why this team potentially could have a really deep run this year speaking of going back to tugler really quick i loved it was like the uh, uh who uh, francis had just fouled out and the commentators mm-hmm. weren't even done talking about like oh man so now you got to bring in this freshman and yeah. then he gets that vicious what <laughs> we immediately think one-handed tip dunk man that i mean it was I, literally in my notes right here, I wrote, good grief, that was sexy. Like, <laughs> insane. Great stuff from him. You love to see it. And, Andy, you, you just kind of referenced it there by talking about Texas fighting and getting that comeback. Mm-hmm. And so, look, all sorts of credit to Texas for doing that. But we're at the point now, and you said this before we started recording, where there are no moral victories. Mm-hmm. Uh, because Texas is at the point where they've got to start stacking stuff if they want to make this NCAA tournament, because right now it legitimately hangs in the balance. Meanwhile, Houston, on the other hand, and you tease this in the cold open, I I know that it's Texas Tech that leads the conference right now, the conference standings. But Andy, I, I mean, if if we were saying right now, today, however many regular season games are left, who would you pick to win this conference? I got to go with Houston. Yeah, me too. I, I think I have to go with Houston as well. And Texas Tech is is the leader right now in the standings. And no disrespect to Texas Tech, they are a, a good program. They're having a fantastic Quick teaser. Year. We'll talk about it later. But they're at TCU tonight. Big game. Yeah, that's a huge game. Yeah, and and, I, and we'll if they win that one, that you know is even more confidence inspiring for the Red Raiders. But I just I believe more in this Houston team right now. I think they have some better wins on their resume. And I think I mean they again this kind of win is really really tough to come by. And and for a team that's new to this conference that, you know, the players on this roster outside of LJ Cryer, interestingly enough, haven't really experienced this environment and these, <laughs> these road, uh, these yeah. road games, the way that, yeah. you know, you feel it in the big 12 conference for them to be, I mean, it's a, it's a testament to the job that Samson has done as a head coach, uh, which we're not surprised by. He's a fantastic coach. And, and clearly he had these guys completely ready for what this conference was going to look like. Uh, and, and they, they stumbled in their first week with those road losses, but they have been absolutely cruising along since then. And that's a great point, Andy, Th- those, two road losses i remember we we're like okay maybe mm-hmm. you know we're seeing a little crack in the armor or something but they've reeled off five straight since then now andy i'm just looking ahead a little bit here there it gets no easier while they were at austin on monday night they got to go to kansas this weekend they've still got texas back at home they've got iowa state at home they're at baylor they've got to go to oklahoma and then they end the regular season hosting kansas so they're just are hardly any breaks 
any uh, moments to get a breath of fresh air in the Big 12, as we know. But a great game. What a way to wrap up a Big Monday. Andy, great stuff there. Now, Andy, earlier in Big Monday in the first game, Duke exercised some recent Blacksburg demons. And uh, here's my question, though. Are they the best four-loss team in the country? We'll check out the answer to that in just a second. Right after I tell you that this episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Hey, happy Super Bowl fortnight to all of you who celebrate. Coming at you from FanDuel, America's number one sports book. If you're like Andy and me, Super Bowl Sunday is all about like the food, the people, the drinks, getting a good seat on the couch, getting rid of the people that are just there for the commercials and us or whatever. <laughs> Man, I'm there for all the rest of that. The line, FanDuel's line for the game right now is 49ers minus a point and a half. Come on, man. Mahomes is inevitable. Get on board, FanDuel, who has so many ways for you to end the season with a W. Not only can you bet on who will win Super Bowl 58, but they also have bets for things like which players will score a touchdown, how many total points will be scored, and so much more. So new customers, join today and you'll get $200 in bonus bets if your first bet of $5 or more wins. Just visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to sign up. Again, that's FanDuel.com slash locked on. Make every moment more with FanDuel, an official sportsbook partner of the NFL. Andy, in the first game of Big Monday, Duke gets a nice road win in Blacksburg, 77 to 67 over Virginia Tech. They never really expanded it and made it like a wide margin, but it always just felt like a very comfortable win to me for Duke as I watched this game. Uh, it felt like, Virginia Tech was just struggling to find any offensive rhythm or shots all night long. I thought Duke made it really difficult on them. Meanwhile, I thought Duke was able to find their way to some pretty good looking shots for the majority of the night. Some great here. May, perhaps my favorite thing from John Shire's team on Monday night, Andy, how about this? Seven different Blue Devils scored and every one of them had at least eight points. That's wild how do you defend that great to see and jeremy roach coming off the bench in this game by the way led the way with 16 points really nice bounce back for duke after that almost loss at home to clemson that we had talked about over the weekend andy to me the difference in this game was the three-point line where the blue devils go nine of 17 while virginia tech goes six of 22 i know that's not a massive difference in number of makes but man, that percentage of making 53% for Duke to just 27% for Virginia Tech, to me, that told this story. Yeah, I think Duke Duke's depth is a huge, huge benefit for them. I mean, Kyle Filipowski had four fouls at like the nine-minute mark. And for a lot of teams, like having your, your star player, your preseason ACC player of the year projected star, like having him be in foul trouble in a significant way with that much time left in a relatively close game. Like that's, that's a huge problem, but for Duke, they, they have the depth, they have the talent in the, in the backcourt, they have the talent on the wing, they have other talent in the front court that they just don't, that doesn't really mess with them as much as it might with many other teams. And, you know, you got Jared McCain hitting threes. You have Jeremy Roach having a fantastic game off the bench. Filipowski and Mark Mitchell had a couple nice passes amongst each other down on the block. And it, you know, like you said, how do you defend a team that can score at every single position? They can score at every spot on the floor. Like they have, they can bring guys in, even if you get, you know, their starters in foul trouble, it's just, they're just a really hard team to stop. And they haven't played that consistently enough uh, to to you know be in that super upper upper echelon conversation the loss to Pitt still kind of looms large for them but when they're playing like this when they have six seven guys who are capable of putting up 10 points or more per night they're a really really tough team to stop yep very much so and it, it you know there's and there's other guys we're not even seeing like TJ Power didn't even play in this game yeah. for Duke um and so there's all that but Andy um, we don't want to spend too much time on this game because, you know, it's whatever Duke took care of business. And that's mm -hmm. what you want to do if you're the Blue Devils, picking up these road wins. But Andy, you went and looked and realized that there were a whole bunch of four loss teams in the Ken Palm top 20, at least where it sits as we record. In fact, right now there are seven of them. How about this, Andy? Tennessee, Wisconsin, Duke, Kentucky, Kansas, Auburn and Iowa State. Those seven teams all are sitting at four losses. So very simply, the question and the conversation now, Andy, is this. Which four loss team are you and I most confident in? 
and define most confident however you so choose? <laughs> it's a tough question. I mean, honestly, it's, you know, uh, a few days or like a week ago, Auburn was a two loss team and we felt very differently about where that team was until they suffered those rough losses. Kentucky has kind of spaced out their losses, but they've had some, you know, kind of questionable mystifying losses like Wilmington a few months ago. And then they had the bad loss, the, the narrow win over Arkansas and the loss to South Carolina. I shouldn't say bad loss. South Carolina is a good team, but yeah. that's still not a, a good loss for Kentucky by any stretch. Meanwhile, Tennessee kind of got most of their losses out of the way early. And so it doesn't feel as, you know, they feel like they're kind of hotter right now because they lost in Maui and, and kind of, you know, it's, it felt like they got those demons out early. So it's hard to pick. I think it's not Iowa State and it's not Wisconsin. And that's not any disrespect to either of those programs. I just I, I don't feel like they're quite at that same level. Wisconsin has been really, really good this year. Uh, but I just they, they, they're questionable to me in terms of the consistency of their offense. Uh, so I'm not I'm not quite there with them. I think it's probably a fully healthy Kentucky team? I don't know because the defense. I think I'm going to go with Tennessee. That's, that's why that's, I was going to rule out Kentucky because, because of that. Because of the defense. Yep. I'm going to go with Tennessee. I think I'm going to go with Tennessee. I'm a little concerned about their offense. I think they're a little bit overly reliant on Dalton Connect, but that's nitpicky when we're talking. I mean, we're we're going to be nitpicky. We're talking about four of seven of the top 20 teams in the country. Uh, but Tennessee, I think to me, they have enough offensive depth, even if Connect has a bad game, that I still think I feel confident about them going forward. Rick Barnes has a, a decades worth of demons to exercise in the NCAA tournament, and he's going to have to prove that he's capable of doing that. Uh, but this that team is really, really good. And I think that of this group, I, I think I it's them and Duke and, and Kentucky's maybe right behind them. And then I think Kansas after that. But I think I lean Tennessee, but they're all pretty close. They're all very good teams, obviously. They really are. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing is there's several of these teams that have either the offensive or defensive unit that concerns me a little bit. What's mm -hmm. funny is Wisconsin is it's flipped from usual. It's it's Wisconsin's defense I'm a little more mm -hmm. concerned about. Kentucky has grown, you know, just last week, anywhere where they like 90s at Ken Palm. Yeah. Now they're up, at least as we record, they're 70th. Mm -hmm. in the nation in defensive efficiency so that's good what's interesting is i you know a lot of times you'll give an answer and if it's the same one that i had i'll change mm -hmm. i don't want to because this is one of those moments where it's like no legitimately which of these teams do you feel most confident and comfortable with and for me it is tennessee yeah. um out out of these teams only tennessee unless i've just messed up my research and what i looked at mm -hmm. it's only tennessee and auburn that are top 20 in both adjusted offense and defense at Ken Palm out of this list. Um, but I'm still just not there on Auburn yet. Um, Kansas, they've shown just some untrustworthiness. Is Johnny Furphy coming along? Maybe that changes some of that narrative. Um, you know, he's showing a little bit of consistency there. And, and if so, I'm a little more willing to buy in on them. I need to still see more from Kentucky's defense. But the talent is all there, and, and that allows me to feel better about Kentucky. Um, with Duke, if they can get help, more healthy all the way, um, you know, I feel like they've been shuttling guys in and out with Roach and Proctor and all that. Um, but right now, it is Tennessee. Obviously, yeah. the defense is there. And Andy, I do feel like there's enough between what you can get out of the combination of Dalton Connect, Santiago Vescovi, Zakai Ziegler. If Connect's not on this team, then everyone else has to move a seat up. Yeah. But because Ziegler's option two, because mm -hmm. Vescovy's option two or three, whatever it is, mm -hmm. that gives me enough confidence in this Tennessee offense to think that they'll be able to continue to do it. Now, uh, we're going to continue to find out a lot more about that um, in their next couple games as they're at home tonight against South Carolina. Obviously, we'll talk about that in a little bit. And then Saturday at Kentucky. So yeah. almost one of those, hey, let's have this conversation again uh, and see which of these teams still is sitting at four losses. Yeah, basically all of these teams have really tough games this weekend. Obviously, Duke and Carolina is the big one coming up on Saturday. Uh, Kansas and Houston are playing each other this weekend, if I'm not mistaken. So there's going to be right. a lot of That's right. really, really good basketball this weekend. Um, I'm with you on the top 20 kind of argument about it with Ken Palm. If you extend it to top 25, interestingly, the only team – out of this group that gets added is Kansas, who is barely in the top 25 in both offense and defensive efficiency. So maybe we're, we're under.
underestimating them a little bit. Duke's a little lower defensively. Uh, Wisconsin's a little lower defensively, but I still think it to me it is it is Tennessee, and, and it's it's close with a lot of those other teams. But I do think that Tennessee, especially as of late, I mean they're playing some really good basketball, and if unless Connect really struggles, uh, this is a team that's going to be really tough to beat going forward. Well, Isaac, we got two ranked-on-ranked games tonight using our Locked On College Basketball Top 25 rankings. We also got three more ranked teams on the road at unranked opponents. Can UNC, Marquette, and Illinois avoid the deadly virus that has been plaguing ranked road teams this season? We're going to talk about it. I want to tell you about today's sponsor, Jace Medical. Folks, I know we come to the sports to escape from some of the crazy realities of real life, but can we take talk for a minute about preparing for those real life events? Because according to the FDI, FDA, pharmacies are running out of antibiotics like amoxicillin right in the middle of the worst flu season in over a decade. And I can't imagine a more helpless feeling than if someone I love got sick while a supply chain issue kept them from the life-saving medication that they needed. Thankfully though, there's Jace Medical. The Jace case is a pack of five different antibiotics to treat a long list of bacterial illnesses, including respiratory infections, skin infections, and more. And this stuff could happen to any one of us. So visit jacemedical.com and complete your physician encounter. It will be reviewed by a board-certified physician, and your medication will be dispensed by a licensed pharmacy at a fraction of the regular cost. It has never been more important to be prepared than today. So go to jacemedical.com, use offer code Locked On to get $20 off your order. All right, Isaac, we got a fantastic slate of games coming our way on Tuesday evening. Tons of fantastic games. We're going to talk about two ranked on ranked games. We're going to talk about three ranked teams who are going on the road to take on unranked opponents, which has been a really tough, tough road for these teams throughout the season. We got a handful of other games we're going to breeze by as well. Let's start with the ranked on ranked game South Carolina at Tennessee. Not a game that we necessarily expected to be talking about as a ranked mm-hmm. on ranked team, but the Gamecocks moved into our top 25 this week. They have had a very, very good season. Uh, that game is at 6 30 Eastern time. Uh, it's on the SEC network. FanDuel currently favors the Vols by 14 and a half points. Our other ranked on ranked game is Texas Tech at TCU, 16 for Texas Tech, 21 for TCU, 7 Eastern time on ESPN2. FanDuel has the Horned Frogs, four and a half. One game in the SEC, one game in the Big 12, some exciting games there coming up on Tuesday, Isaac. Very much so, Andy. Like you said, like this South Carolina thing is kind of out of nowhere. I mean, just, just think back to last year. They get Gigi Jackson to decommit from mm-hmm. North Carolina, stay home, and you're thinking, well, may, you know, maybe they can do something here in year one. Mm-hmm. I don't know. You know, what What are we looking at with that? Maybe Lamont Paris can do something in year one. But then an NBA caliber talent heads out the door, and mm-hmm. suddenly they're a great team this year. And I don't I don't think, you know, I'm that sounds like I'm putting that on Gigi Jackson. I'm not. Mm-hmm. It's just funny how the, these kind of things work out in uh, this era. Look. I, specifically with this SEC game, I think this is a game that Tennessee and the and the number shows you clearly on that that Tennessee should win handily. But I mean, South Carolina coming off having beat Kentucky last week, then you know taking care of uh, of Mizzou over the weekend, like they got three games in a row. They've only lost two SEC games. Of course, one of those was at home to Georgia. So you know you just got some head scratching mm-hmm. with that. Andy, ultimately, I think it's another game where where Dalton Connect just has a little bit of fun and goes off. I think Tennessee wins this one as well, but I, I do just want to shout out South Carolina. I mean, they have three losses on the year. The Georgia loss is obviously the, the bad one. They lost to Alabama. They've been good this year. They lost to Clemson. That was when Clemson was was really firing on all cylinders early in the year. Uh, they don't have a ton of great wins, but the win over Grand Canyon, I think, is aging well. Grand Canyon's really good. That's a quality win for them. They beat Virginia Tech. That's a decent win. Mississippi okay. State, like – the, obviously, Kentucky is the big one for them, but this is a decent resume that Lamont Paris's team is putting together. So I want to give a shout out to the Gamecocks. Really nice stuff from them. I do think ultimately Dalton Connect and Tennessee are going to find a way to pull off a victory. And I think the game that is probably going to be a little bit closer as the Big 12 games are just always such an absolute, uh, just a rock fight night in and night out. The Red Raiders heading to to take on TCU, the Horned Frogs. That's going to be 
I'm really excited about this game. I think we were talking a little bit about Texas Tech earlier as a team that, uh, you know, only has a couple, only has one loss in the Big 12 and is in first place right now. And this is a, a big test for them. If they can go win this one, beat a TCU team that's really on fire right now, has played some really great basketball as of late uh, with that that win over Baylor. Like this, this is a really fun one, I think. And and here's the other thing. I mean, just looking back at those Big 12 standings we were talking about, right now TCU is two games out of first place, but it's one of those where if they can send the Red Raiders to their second loss, mm -hmm. then they're just sitting one game back of the lead. And then at that point, you've got, at least as it sits right now, if TCU wins this game, you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven Big 12 teams with two or three losses. So um, I'm here for the chaos. I'd love to see <laughs> Texas Tech keep rolling because yeah. that's just a great story. Um, and I just love Grant McCaslin, like figuring this out so well in year one, more than any of us expected. But man, more Big 12 chaos if TCU can pull this one off. Well, we got three ranked teams heading on the road. Like we said, I'm going to read them off to you and we're going to pick which of these teams we think is most likely to potentially take an upset. Uh, I am going to read the fan duel lines, which is probably going to give away who we might pick here uh, <laughs> as the potential upset. We start with the Tar Heels of North Carolina, our number three ranked team. They're going on the road at Georgia Tech, seven Eastern time on Tuesday. ESPN FanDuel has the Tar Heels nine and a half point favorites. Got Illinois at Ohio State, also at seven on Peacock. Uh, Illinois is favored by two and a half in that one. And then Marquette at Villanova, also at seven o'clock. You got to have a triple screen there uh, if you want to watch all three of these. Uh, FS1 FanDuel has Villanova favored by one and a half in that one. What do you, what do you got here? Well, Andy, it's funny. Like, I I really want to say Ohio State, but they have lost five of six, Andy. it's it's They're in a bad spot right now. The Buckeyes are not in a good spot right now. It's rough. And, and it's this thing where, you know, Illinois had had lost that game last week mm -hmm. to Northwestern and, and whatever. But and and honestly, none of these home teams do I feel great about because Villanova hadn't been playing well at all either. But mm -hmm. I mean, I feel like that's kind of what you got to go with yeah. in this scenario. And I was thinking that even before uh, you read off those lines there and it's at one and a half. But, you know, I mean, I just said, what was it? Five of six that Ohio State's lost. Guess what? Villanova's done in their last six games, yeah. Andy. The exact same thing. You so want to you know what else? Georgia Tech's lost seven of eight. Oh my <laughs> word! Like so, these are not good teams. So, so what do we do with this? Yeah. Um. I still, I think, I, I legitimately, my my heart wants to go with Ohio State, but mm -hmm. my brain is saying Villanova. Yeah, I am too. I honestly think all three are going to win. I really do. I, I think all three uh, home teams. No, I think all three. Yeah, uh, no, Andy teams. Patton, you just said all these home teams are going to win. That's what's happening. Yeah, right if, I get it, if I get it right, we're doing a trophy or something because that would be <laughs> ridiculous. No, I, it, yeah, it's it's we're a long ways away from when Damon Stoudemire and Georgia Tech had those wins, back to back wins over Mississippi and Duke. They've been rough as of late. We've spent a lot of time talking about Villanova and their struggles as of late as well. And, and yeah, Ohio State has not been anywhere close to the team people expected them to be. And, and I think Illinois is the most vulnerable of the of those three teams that are ranked, but I, I have a hard time seeing any of these teams losing, if we're being honest. Yeah, I completely agree with that assessment. Well, Isaac, we're gonna. I'm going to speed quick, really quickly. We got Oklahoma at Kansas State. We got Mississippi State at Ole Miss. A couple fun games there. Oklahoma State at Kansas. That's the only other ranked team that is playing on Tuesday night uh, in our ranking. San Diego State at Colorado State. Fun Mountain West game there. And then Michigan at Michigan State, which we tossed on here because it's a rivalry game, but it's not. <laughs> it's kind of like UCLA team. and USC. Yeah, exactly. It's not as relevant as uh, I think you would have expected it to be when, when you made the schedule back uh, before the season started. I do want to get to Trivia Tuesday, though, as well as a reminder for those of you who've been thinking on this Trivia Tuesday question. The question, Houston became the fourth member of this season's 19-win club. Can you name the other three teams? Isaac, who do you got? Houston, Andy. One of the four, yes. Nice yes. work. <laughs> Um, I mean, my my inclination, my first next thing is Purdue is my gut. Yep, Purdue is correct. After that, man, I was waffling. I was trying to think because it's probably at some point at least one or of these two final answers are not going to be a high major team. They, neither of them are. Neither of them are. Okay, the next team I was thinking, and I don't know how many they have, is Dayton. 
It is not Dayton. Um, Dayton okay. has 16. 60. That's it. I was just trying to think of teams that had big winning streaks. Um, yeah, I guess though. <laughs> right now, the longest winning streak is McNeese State. Let me go with them. Yes, McNeese is Stop one of the two. It. Are you freaking kidding me? Yep, McNeese work. Yep, McNeese is 19 and two. Um, man, I don't know. After James Madison, they, they that's had a good long... guess, but they are 18 and three. But it's not them. Uh, okay, get, get, can I have the conference? Yes, that'll probably help you quite a bit. It is the whack. Oh, Grand Canyon. Yep, Grand Canyon. I would uh, not have. Purdue, I would not have gotten that. One. I didn't think so. That's a tough one. Um, yes, the Lopes have had a fantastic season, but That's interestingly, good. looking at the upcoming games for these teams, uh, Purdue's playing Northwestern and Grand Canyon's playing Seattle U, and those are two of the teams that those two teams have lost to. So I'm yeah. curious if they will feel some pressure trying to get to that win number twenty and potentially drop those games. Houston's at Kansas, so that's a tough one for them, uh, regardless of whether they're feeling that pressure. And then McNeese <laughs> has Southeast Louisiana State, so they may they may end up being the team that gets the first to twenty if any of those other teams happen to stumble. And Purdue Wisconsin on Sunday. Let's yeah, a lot of great basketball coming up, <laughs> y'all. Just brace yourselves. This weekend is going to be awesome. Okay, guys, it's been a great episode of Locked On College Basketball. Thank you so much for joining us today. Again, as Andy said earlier, we'd love for you to join the Locked On College Basketball Discord channel. It's free, and the link is in the show notes. It's a great time. Come for the college basketball. Stay for the people. You won't be disappointed. Don't forget to subscribe on video and audio to the show. We love it if you leave a review and a rating. That's so helpful to us as we spread the word. If you're watching on YouTube, smash the like button. And as always, apologies to the lawyer family. Let's go Wildcats. And until tomorrow, when Leaf and Andy are coming at you, peace.